Good morning students. So today we had to focus on the chapter which is Killing Time by Nasibu Mohanakusi. So in our last class we discussed regarding the introduction part of this chapter. So today we had to focus on regarding the author's details who is Nasibu Mohanakusi in which he is popularly known by his artist name Ras Nas who is a native of Morgaro, Tanzania. He is basically a musician whose attempt is to transform his native African music by blending it with reggae and his own poetry. Apart from being a musician, Monagusi is a poet, painter, lyricist, then guitarist and also percussionist. So he follows ancient African tradition of storytelling through poetry but takes it a step further by attempting a college of poetry, mime, music and dance. Nasibu was greatly influenced by the poets Langston Hughes, Cuis Brew, and Keropis William Cogestil, and the exceptional frankness and rawness of his personality is seen infused in his poems and music as well. So here we had to on regarding the author's details. So basically, he is popularly known by the name Ras Nas, which is his artist name, and also he is native of Morgaro, Tanzania. Then basically he was a musician, and also his intention was to transform his native African music by blending it with reggae and also his own poetry. And also he was a poet, painter, lyricist, guitarist, and also a percussionist. And he follows ancient African tradition of storytelling through poetry but takes it a step further by attempting a college of poetry, mime, music and dance. So basically his literary works which includes all these kinds of things. So, so here we have a kind of story, very short story in which the technique of this magical realism is used. So basically he was influenced by the poets Langston Hughes, Cuse Brew and also William Cogastill. So basically here we had focus on regarding his character in which the the exceptional frankness and rawness of his personality is seen infused in his poems and music as well. So here we have this story which is Killing Time in which it presents a nondescript narrator who literally kills time at a cafe observing the world around him which seems to be as aimless as himself. And also the technique of magical realism which is an important strategy of postcolonial writers is adopted here. So here we had focused on regarding the magical realism. So what is magical realism? So basically it is a literary or artistic genre in which realistic narrative and naturalistic technique are combined with surreal elements of dream and fantasy. So basically this is the very short definition of the magical realism. So basically it is a Latin American narrative strategy that is characterized by the matter of fact, inclusion of fantastic or mythical elements into seemingly realistic fiction. So magical realism chiefly is a Latin American narrative strategy that is characterized by the matter of fact inclusion of fantastic and also the mythical elements into seemingly realistic fiction. So basically here we have the fantasy or the mythical elements which is combined into the realistic fiction. So basically it is a Latin American narrative strategy. And also this strategy is known in the literature of many cultures in many ages and also this term which is magical realism is a relatively recent designation first applied in the 1940s by Cuban novelist who is Aljo Carpentier. So here we had to focus on regarding the term magical realism in which it was used by the Cuban novelist in 1940s who is Aljo Carpentier and who recognized this characteristic in much Latin American literature and also some scholars have used this magical realism as a natural outcome of post-colonial writing which must make sense of at least two separate realities, the reality of the conquerors as well as that of the conquered. So here the magical realism is also related to the post-colonial writer. So here we have some prominent writers who use this uh, technique of this magical realism in, in which the Latin American magical realist which includes the Colombian Gabriel Garcia, then Brazilian Jorge Amado, then the Argentine George Luis Borges and Julio Cortazar and also the Chilean Isabel Allende. So these are the major writers or the prominent writers among this Latin American magical realist. So that's regarding some important aspect regarding the magical realism. So basically it is a kind of literary journal in which the fantastic or mythical elements 
which is combined with the realistic fiction. So in a very short manner, the magical realism is a literary or artistic genre in which realistic narrative and naturalistic technique are combined with surreal elements of dream or fantasy. So we have to focus on two important factors, the dream or fantasy along with the surreal elements which is combined with the realistic narrative and also the naturalistic technique. So here we have the killing time in which this technique of this magical realism is used. So regarding this chapter, we have a narrator who literally kills time at a cafe observing the world around him which seems to be as aimless as himself. And also the beautiful interweaving of reality and mysticism strongly presents the native which means the African disdain and also the disillusionment at the drab culture of the colonizer encroaching upon the vibrant tradition of Africa. So basically this is regarding the magical realism in which how this author who is Rasnas was used this technique in this story. So basically he is the native African and also here the beautiful interweaving of reality and mysticism strongly presents this native African disdain or and the disillusionment at the drab culture of the colonizer encroaching upon the vibrant tradition of Africa. So that's regarding the introduction part for this chapter which is the killing time by Nasibo Monogusi. Now we had to focus on this chapter from page number 118. It was after he had entered the cafe, paid for his glass of beer, looked for an empty table that I spotted him. He had a glass full of beer in his right hand and grey gloves on the other. He moved briskly across the floor, past people who were drinking, smoking and talking noisily until he reached the empty table. Hesitatingly, he pulled up a chair, sat down and unzipped his brown coat. I heard him clear his throat. His eyes moved around and finally settled on the glass of beer that he had put on the table. He cleared his throat once again and looked a long gulp. He wiped his mouth with the back of his left hand. So here we have the first scene of this chapter in which it is the cafe. The setting of the story is a cafe in which the narrator of the story who was in this cafe and he spotted a stranger in such a way that the narrator says that I spotted him in which he paid for a glass of beer looked for an empty table and also he had a glass of full of beer in his right hand and grey gloves on the other. So this is the details regarding this character in which the stranger and he moved briskly across the floor past people who were drinking, smoking and talking noisily until he reached the empty table. So the target of this stranger was an empty table. So he just moved on to this empty table. So basically the narrator, the narrator of the story is watching this guy. Then hesitatingly he pulled up a chair, sat down and unzipped his brown coat. I heard him clear his throat. His eyes moved around and finally settled on the glass of beer that he had put on the table. Then he cleared his throat once again and took a long gulp. He wiped his mouth with the back of his left hand. So basically here the narrator is minutely observing this stranger in this cafe. So basically he was drinking a glass of beer and also the narrator observes all the kind of detail, the minute details of the stranger and he was observing this guy. Then I could easily estimate that he was over 50 by the greyness of his hair and the multitude of wrinkles running chaotically across his face like gullies. He did not look like he belonged where he was sitting. There was an air of turbulent temporality across him. He seemed distant and drawn in a stream of thoughts. A little while later, when I started to think about him, I saw him confirming something that was crossing his mind. He nodded his head from time to time and moved his hands like he was discussing an important issue with someone that only he could see. It would have been bills, I thought, an impending divorce or a quarrel with the boss. It could have been anything, but it was quite obvious that something was eating in his mind. He was being mercilessly devoured by the invisible teeth of life. Then I caught my own reflection in the mirror that was on the wall in front of me. 
I saw myself sitting there, drinking herbal tea and letting my mind wander aimlessly, killing time. So regarding this narrator, he was aimlessly killing the time in this cafe. So basically he saw himself as a reflection in the mirror. And also the narrator was drinking herbal tea and letting his mind wander aimlessly, killing time. So this is regarding the narrator. And before that he was observing this stranger in this cafe. So basically according to the narrator, he estimated something regarding this stranger in which he clearly describes his character and regarding his minute details of his face. And also he noted that he seemed distant and drawn in a stream of thoughts. So according to the narrator, this stranger was in a kind of stream of thoughts and also he minutely observed this stranger in which he said that I saw him confirming something that was crossing his mind. He nodded his head from time to time and moved his hands like he was discussing an important issue with someone that only he could see. So this was the situation of this stranger in which something was disturbing in his mind, the stranger's mind. And according to the narrator, he said that it could have been bills and also maybe the divorce or a quarrel with the boss, something like that. And one thing was very clear in which his mind was disturbed so that he was drinking this glass of beer. So basically all these kinds of thoughts by this narrator was a kind of assumption in which a, a lots of assumptions by this narrator. Then after that, Watching myself in the mirror, a sudden feeling creeped through me, a sensation that I too was being watched from my left. I turned around and saw a beard man looking at me. So here we have another stranger who is a beard man who is watching this narrator, the narrator of the story. So basically here we have the first stranger in which the narrator was looking and now we have a beard man who is observing this narrator, the narrator of the story. Watching myself in the mirror, a sudden feeling creep through me, a sensation that I too was being watched by from my left. I turned around and saw a beard man looking at me. He was partly hidden. I had seen him before in town but I could not remember where. Our eyes met like clashing searchlights. I wanted to give him a wink but immediately changed the idea. He had been looking at me as I spied on the stranger. The room was filled with noise and smoke. In the middle of all, this was the stranger. Then I could see the stranger through the smoke that filled the room. I fixed my eyes on him without him noticing and after a while I started to see all of him rising up. He was being reincarnated in the misty cloud of cigarette smoke that was wafting under the neon light. It was a spectacular scene. He was rising together with the chair that he was sitting on, plus the table as well as the glass of beer which was now half empty. He was lifted up in the smoke like a master yogi meditating above mountain Kilimanjaro and thus I fix my eyes on him even more. So here we have the beard man in which he was looking this narrator and also we have some more details regarding this cafe in which this room was filled with noise and smoke and in the middle of all this was the stranger. And regarding this beard man, according to the narrator, I had seen him before in town, but I could not remember where. Our eyes met like clashing searchlights. I wanted to give him a wink but immediately changed the idea. And also he had been looking at me as I spied on this stranger. So here we have the beard man who had been looking this narrator and also according to the narrator our eyes met like clashing the searchlights. So here we have the narrator of the story as well as this beard man they are looking vice versa. So here we had to focus on regarding their observations. Then I could see the stranger through the smoke that filled the room. So here the narrator was looking this stranger, the first stranger in which through the smoke that filled the room. So, th so the room was filled with the noise and smoke. So the narrator was watching this stranger through the smoke that filled that room. And also the narrator was focusing on him without him noticing and after a while he started to see all of him rising up. He was being reincarnated in the misty cloud of cigarette smoke that was wafting under the neon light. So this was the setting of the story in which it is a cafe and also here we have the noise. 
smog and also the misty cloud of cigarette smog that was wafting under the neon light. So this is the setting of this cafe. So just imagine this kind of cafe and also we have a stranger and most importantly we have this narrator who is looking this stranger and just near to that we have this beard man. So this is the image that we had to keep in mind. And according to the narrator it was a spectacular scene. Then the stranger was rising together with the chair that he was sitting on plus the table as well as the glass of beer which was now half empty. He was lifted up in the smoke like a master yogi meditating above mountain Kilimanjaro and thus I fix my eyes on him even more. So here we have the narrator who envisions the stranger as a master yogi. So he just compares the stranger to a master yogi in such a way that he was lifted up in the smoke like a master yogi meditating above mountain Kilimanjaro and thus I fix my eyes on him even more. So here the narrator is focusing on the stranger only. So he is just observing all these kinds of details regarding the stranger. And also here we have a kind of troublesome situation. But actually it is not a kind of uh, that kind of situation but according to the tone of the story we have a kind of uh, that kind of troublesome uh, situation or a setting of this uh, story. Then following that at the end of the story from the corner of my eye I saw that even the beard guy sitting to my left was looking at the stranger with a growing intensity. So now we were in fact two people sitting and spying on the stranger from two different angles. So now the beard man also this narrator both they focused on this stranger. So basically according to the narrator we were in fact two people sitting and spying on the stranger from two different angles. Then three jazz musicians were playing softly on the stage now and then the waitress came and cleared the tables. After a while, I straightened up to look at the stranger and he was gone. At the table where he had been sitting was only an empty glass of beer and an ashtray. And except for the transparent glass, the space around the table looked exactly as it was before I spotted the stranger. So this is the end of the story. So basically this is a kind of narrative, a very short narrative. So here we have the final part of the story. Three jazz musicians were playing softly on the stage. So, so this is the setting of the story. So regarding this cafe, it was full of noise and smoke. And also we have these three jazz musicians who were playing softly on the stage. And also the setting of the cafe is like a troublesome scene. And also we have a neon light with smoke and noise in this cafe. Then after that, the waitress came and cleared the tables. After a while, I straightened up to look at the stranger and he was gone. So, so here the stranger was gone from this uh, cafe and also at the table where he had been sitting was only an empty glass of beer and also an ashtray. And except for the transparent glass, the space around the table looked exactly as it was before I spotted the stranger. So this is how the story ends. So here we have a kind of descriptive and also a minute detailed narrative of a cafe, a scene in a cafe in which a stranger came to that cafe, he drinks a glass of beer and also the narrator is watching him and also he narrates all these kinds of uh, details regarding the stranger and also a beard man who is observing this narrator and finally both the beard man and also the narrator they were observing this guy who is this stranger so finally this unnamed stranger he was gone and at the table where he had been sitting was only an empty glass of beer and also an ashtray and except for the transparent glass the space around the table looked exactly as it was before I spotted this stranger so that's regard this story so here we have some kind of this uh, dream or a kind of fantasy or a kind of this illusion all these kinds of things in this story so basically it is a kind of magical realism so basically it is a kind of technique used by the author which is the magical realism so today we discussed around this chapter which is killing time and also regarding the topic which is the magical realism so in the next class we will be focusing on some important topics regarding this chapter and also we will be focusing on the next chapter which is the harvest which is a play by Manjula Patnavan in the next class. So that's for today. Thank you. Happy learning.